Freedom Friday. Today is May 2nd, 2014, and we uh, made it through, what is it, Beltron? What is it? May 1st, Maypole Day, <laughs> some Illuminati. Uh-huh. Uh, in Brazil, it's some Marxist Labor Day where no one works, mm-hmm. and they just sit around and, I guess, do socialist things. So Marcos was saying. Yep. We made it through that, and we barely made it through it. Yes. Just Kapow and I. We had a uh, dust storm. Devil dust storm. Yeah, devil dust storm. I would call it. Here in Southern California, uh, we got hit really hard with really bad winds. Uh, as you know, we don't have tornadoes out here, but we have these winds. They usually call them Santa Anas. Uh, but I have never seen in all my years uh, living in Southern California winds like this. Mm-hmm. Never. They were gale force winds. Yeah. And we've had property damage before from winds um, years ago. But this wind was relentless. Yes. I mean, it went from Tuesday midnight mm-hmm. through Wednesday, and we're still having some um, today and yesterday. Yeah. It killed us. It really did. It. Um, we have several outside structures of our house. As you know, we have like five acres, and we live in a box canyon. Well, when the wind comes down... If it's windy in the city, say 40 miles an hour, you can double it in the, in the canyon. Mm-hmm. And uh, in fact, uh, my roof is rated for like 80 miles an hour or something. But it took one of our, our carports where we park our, our truck. I park my tractor there. Mm-hmm. It took so this. It's pretty big. Oh, it's huge. It's, mm-hmm. um, I think it's 16 by 21. Yeah. Steel building mm-hmm. with concrete anchors that go two feet in the ground. Yep. Uh, that wind picked it up, threw it over our pool area, cracking the block walls, bouncing off our driveway and into our neighbor's acreage. We're all on well system here, and it hit his well, his pressure tank, water everywhere. Uh, the wind was probably blowing 50, 60 miles an hour. Oh, yeah, we out easy. There. Uh, we spent four hours out there trying to get his water restored mm-hmm. in, in this gale force wind. And it's hot. And it's hot, yeah, it's in the 90s. It's just it's. I've never lived in the Middle East, but it felt like this is what Dubai would feel like, mm-hmm. or something. Just miserable. Yeah. And then while we're out there, the uh, one of our patio covers from our pool flew off. Did the same thing. Smacked. Um, just missed our other our other. And it's anchored port. to cement. Oh, it's anchored. And yes. the cement cracked. Yeah. As the poles were being lifted up. Yeah. Hit the block That's... wall again. Broke a bunch of stuff. Tumbled. Ended up in my neighbor's yard again, mm-hmm. breaking some of his landscaping, you yeah. know. And our pool is... Ugh. Our pool, forget it. It's it, mud. It's mud. mud. <laughs> it's, it's a mud pit. Uh, oh, and then in the process of it, uh, it was real, real windy. And uh, Miss Kapow and I had gone out in the afternoon. And when I, and in the morning, the morning I had moved my truck out of the carport because I didn't trust it. I was like, man, this wind is too, too much. But by the time she came home and then we went out again, I was driving and um, she told me, yeah, you should just park it in the driveway, um, you know, just in case. And I go, ah, it might get more damage in the driveway. I'm going to park it in the car. Nothing's going to happen. So I park it in the carport. When that port took off, it took a piece of the truck with it. So, no. to, you know, uh, yeah, I was on the phone yesterday for an hour and a half with the insurance company and I have three claims I have three claim numbers, one for my liability on my neighbor's house, uh, one for our house, and one for uh, our truck. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. Unbelievable. So it yep. rains on the just and it rains on the unjust. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, I, don't, I hate to complain too much because I think of all the people in the Midwest, uh, oh, you know, in Missouri and Arkansas that got hit with those tornadoes and they actually lost lives and total homes and things like that. Yep. You know, we lost a steel structure and a, and a patio cover and mm-hmm. some, you know, of course, all our plants. My freedom garden looks like <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, it's go- everything's gone. Oh, and we had a um, a small nest, a hummingbird nest, yeah. and I was praying for it and everything. But um, the winds took it. It was so yeah, sad. I it's know. so sad. But um, but, you know, there's a lot of good things that did happen. I mean, God has shown us a lot of favor. Um, people have been praying for us yeah. and, you know. Yeah, we, uh, you know, dealing with the insurance and stuff, we were able to, you know, give some good favor, some good people that, you mm-hmm. know, we dealt with. So anyway, we kind of got it handled. It's it's on its way. 
What are you going to do? Yeah. It you does know? remind me of the uh, scripture in Habakkuk where it says, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field say, shall wheel, yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet. And he will make me to walk upon mine high places. You know, that's the attitude to have right Amen. there. Amen. At a Habakkuk. And God gives you the power to do that. Yeah. And he yeah. gives us peace through these um, storms. Through Literally. These bad times. Yeah. Seriously. You know, and that is what we praise God for. Well, we, we got hit um, on multiple levels. Not only was this wind. At the time the wind was blowing, this was Wednesday, just tearing apart our, our structures and our house. Um you know, we're wondering if our or if our roof's going to stay up, and mm-hmm. you know, I mean, major deal. The power went out. Mm-hmm. The power went oh, out, yeah, and right. it was no out power. all day. Yeah. Now here's the deal: we are totally electric out here. Mm-hmm. We're on a well. That well has to have power to get water. And not only did that go out, mm-hmm. right? The phone service went out. Yeah. AT&T is gone. <laughs> we have no service. I looked at Miss Kapow and I go, we're on our own, chicky baby. <laughs> yep. Something bad happens. No one's coming. Um, out in the city, there was fire trucks. There's accidents. It looked like the apocalypse. People are it running really into did. each other. I'm driving and there's zero visibility because of the dust storm. Mm-hmm. Zero. Mm-hmm. And I'm driving. People are hitting each other. It's crazy out there. And uh, we have no phone service, no power, no fire service. No one knows. No one's coming. Mm -mm. Um, Absolutely incredible. Fortunately, a couple of years ago, you know, we bought a big house generator and we have everything hooked up to the house. And I was able to fire that up and, Mm -hmm. you know, at least uh, we can warm up some food. Yep. And, you know, the wonderful thing about God is, too, um, Justin had shared with me how even before he knew any of this stuff was happening with us um, in the middle of the night, the Lord had woke him up and gave him a burden for us and he was praying. And um, so it just goes to show you that that God is aware of these things and he does yeah. care and, you know, and praise the Lord that Justin um, yielded to the Holy Ghost and mm-hmm. prayed for us. And There's a reason for this stuff and it's just like, you know, you, you read in, mm-hmm. in Habakkuk. 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 Um, Habakkuk. You know, and it does rain on the just and the unjust and you can't sit there and go, well, I, and I, used to, I used to do this. I used to feel this way because I was a Christian and because I was born again that my property should pr- be protected. Mm-hmm. And I would mope, you know, and what's the sense of serving God if he ain't going to protect you in this life, right? And I would. I would mope like that. And uh, But I've learned that uh, it just it is what it is. And even in those circumstances, you know, you can rise above it and you, and you see God's mercy and favor and, Amen. and who knows what the, what the reason is at the end of the day, you know, and, and like what I, good can come out of it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and look at, and, and when I see you, you know, I praise the Lord because I could see how much you've already grown. Yeah. Because you didn't react like you normally would. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. So that's, In the yeah, past, I would have been all report. mad at God and all, oh, you know, I'm trying to serve you and you know. My carport's gone. Uh, you know, <laughs> whatever. But there's so much to be thankful for. Oh yeah, everybody's so alive. No one got hurt. You know, our puppies are fine, and we're all fine. All right, hey, we got a busy show, so quit talking about us. Let's move on to some um, crazy junk. Is that that's your scripture today? No, I one? have I have another one. Um, Psalm nine. It says, "I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart." I will show forth all thy mar- marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. When mine enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou satest in the throne judging right. Thou hast rebuked the heathen, though hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast put out their name for ever and ever. O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end, and thou hast destroyed cities. The memorial is perished with them, but the Lord shall endure forever. He has prepared his throne for judgment, and he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble, and they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to the Lord which dwell in 
Zion, declare among the people his doings. When he makes inquisition for blood, he remembers them. He forgets not the cry of the humble. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death, that I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of, thy, of the daughter of Zion, I rejoice in thy salvation. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made. In the net which they hid is their own foot taken. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executes. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Selah. Amen. I can sure uh, hold on to that. Mm-hmm. Okay, a recap of uh, last week. Last Monday, we did a show called Tending the Temple Garden of Your Life. Yep. Another beautiful teaching um, delivered to Miss Kampal by our Lord. And uh, so we talked about that. That's a real good show um, talking about uh, the comparison between the Garden of Eden and the Temple of God, which you are now, and mm-hmm. how you need to tend it and guard it and protect it. Yes. And then on Tuesday, Brother Marcos came on and talked about spiritism. Very interesting show mm-hmm. uh, where, you know, he talked about a lot of spiritism. People do it in practice, even though they don't do it in name, like I'm a spiritist. Right. They do it in practice, talking mm-hmm. to their dead grandma and people like that. And how it's saturated in uh, globally in our yeah. entertainment and movie industries and things like that. Very good show. Mm-hmm. And he gives like three tests. Very good. To um, implement, to find out if you are... A spiritist, <laughs> or, or, or yeah, doing or false, false religion, or something like that. Exactly. Identify false religion. You remember gives, what those tests were? Um, it's a uh, tool. No need to. Um, basically, they they deny the cross of Jesus, the work of Jesus on the cross. Um, that there are many ways to God, mm-hmm. and um, oh, and there are many chances to get yeah. to heaven. Yeah. You always have like a redo. <laughs> exactly. It's like a salvation through self, and um, they they offer a more evolved type of religion, yeah. and then yeah, a redo, another mm-hmm. chance of like redemption. reincarnation, that kind of thing. It's yeah, a very good message. Very good. And then um, our brother Justin, or I mean, I'm Patrick. sorry, Patrick came on Wednesday. Racism, hatred, and political corruption. Very good. Very good. Talked about the the current events that's going on with the NBA mm-hmm. and all this nonsense and all this r- racism. In fact, um, you know, when we posted his show on Facebook, <clears throat> Marcos made a comment. And put a link to another uh, a racist incident. He says there was also an anti-racism campaign uh, in the soccer world that spread like wildfire this week oh, on, yeah. on the globe. Barcelona, right? Uh, I'm, Spain? Yes. Yes. He said focused on a Barcelona player. Someone in the stadium threw him a banana. Um, of course, we're all against racism, but why two major campaigns in the same week? Uh, now they found out the soccer campaign had been pre-planned. Um, is it all divide and conquer, putting us one against the other? And he has a link to that anti-racism banana campaign was planned by Neymar, Dani Alves, or Alves, and marketing firm. Um, interesting, interesting stuff. So if that's a good show. Listen to Patrick uh, about that because he, he lays it all into perspective and, and what's going on today. And then, of course, Justin came on yesterday and he interviewed Tex Mars. If you don't know who Tex Mars is, he's a prolific author um, and great, uh, great writer, great DVDs. In fact, I'm looking at one of his um, encyclopedias, Mysterious Monuments. Mm-hmm. I love that one. And he inter- interviewed Tex Mars about the synagogue of Satan. Um, it's an it's a it's an umbrella that covers many mind blowing, informative, prophetic topics. It really kind of talks about end times, but it talks about the current Israel yes. the situation, Jews from real Jews, from from believers in Christ mm-hmm. to a synagogue of Satan, uh, DNA. I mean, really, really informative, very, very good. Um, Going to blow you away. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, that's our update, and I uh, probably talk too much now. Got a lot of stuff to get through. Some a lot of stuff. Through it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, we're going to talk about kids at first and the school system and what's going on and um, what it leads to and <laughs> why we're there. This middle school teacher is accused of giving lap dance to student in front of class. Well, I'm probably in California, that's probably okay. It's probably in their policy. And they probably had to give them their lunch money. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
A middle school teacher reportedly admits that she gave a student a birthday lap dance in front of the entire class. Yep. She's a 42-year-old Felicia Smith. Gave the lap dance to a 15-year-old boy inside uh, the classroom. Apparently, she stopped the teenager from going to the next class. And the entire class, she told him to just sit down and wait. She placed a chair in front of the, the kid. Uh, this is, I guess, in Houston. Mm-hmm. Then she gave the boy a full contact lap dance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the boy told authorities she touched him all over his bote, including placing her head between his legs. Oh, dear Lord. She's 42. He's 15. Yeah, disgusting. At the end of the four-minute long lap dance, Smith reportedly told the boy, I love you, baby. Happy birthday. Um, Perverted. Oh, if I was his parent. Yeah. I would come on glued. So, I mean, sure. you, you read something like that and you go, what are you thinking? Yeah, exactly. What are you thinking? What is wrong with today's education? Mm-hmm. You know? Obviously, she wasn't thinking. Exactly. Which brings us to another story about school oh, administrators and people so who don't annoying. think. High school students say the Pledge of Allegiance in Arabic, one nation under Allah, not under God, but under Allah. And these stupid people... In the school, the principal has oh, yeah. no. He's taken aback by the the criticism. Oh, we can't believe it. Why? Why? Why is everybody being so mean? Yeah, we just just because we said Allah instead of God, it's all God. It's allegiance to America is allegiance to America. Yeah, no matter it doesn't how matter what it. language. Yes, that's, that's his, what he said. Right? He, yeah, he's some bozo. He's out of Colorado too. He's probably eating those uh, magic mushroom cookies. Oh yeah, of course. And uh, you know, injecting uh, marinol in his eyeballs. Yes, principal Tom Lopez. He denies any attempt to push Islam, and he says these students love this country. They were not being un-American to try doing this. They believed that they were accentuating the meaning of the words as spoken regularly in English. He's so full of caca. He's full of schmitty. Uh, what happened is the school recites the Pledge of Allegiance every week on Mondays. Mm-hmm. Last Monday, a member of their cultural arms club led the student body in an uh, in an. Um, Unknown Ar- language or Arabic, Arabic language. version of the pledge, mm-hmm. replacing the words under God with under Allah. See, that would irritate me. Oh, isn't that something? No, 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 no. no. Um, he said the, the cultural club seeks to, quote unquote, destroy the barriers, embrace the cultures that exist within high school. I wonder how many Muslims they have at Fort Collins, Colorado. Hello. And then the the, the, uh, school district communicator uh, director, Danielle Clark, said that they understand why parents are upset. She told Fox News, we understand not everybody would agree with the student's choice. We have heard that there are some who are very upset. You think? Um, (laughs) She's feeble-minded. So is Clark. They're both feeble-minded. And then they're pat, trying to pass the buck on the kids. Exactly. The kids wanted to do this. It's their, it's their cultural. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a student-initiated and student-led club. There is no school sponsor or advisor. It doesn't come under the umbrella of the district. Which is bullcrap because well, yeah. if they decided, you know what, we want to say a pledge of allegiance under Satan. Yes. You think they're gonna, the school's going to allow that? Yeah, it's a cultural. Well, they probably would. Yeah. That's probably a bad but example. You know, but Let's you know what I mean? Let's say pledge of allegiance under God, under mm-hmm. Yahweh. Yeah. That they wouldn't allow. Exactly. You know, that they wouldn't allow. Well, no, well, we can't because, you know, we, we, you represent the, the district. But you Annoying. Idiots. Liars. I know. I know. So anyway, that happened. And uh, they said the Pledge of Allegiance under Allah. <sighs> School system. Here we go. Sacramento, California. This California, the mm. land of fruits and nut cakes. We live For here. Sure. Yeah. We're nuts. California is absolutely insane with their politics. You have to understand there's a big difference between Northern California and Southern California. When you get past L.A. and you get down here to the Inland Empire. Uh, We're a little more conservative. Uh, than- yeah, a lot more in the Inland Empire. San Bernardino, Riverside County. Mm-hmm. Um, some of Orange County could be yeah. conservative. But you get up Very L.A. Little. and above, then you get you get nutty. San Francisco, you're just a fruitcake, mm-hmm. uh, literally. That's where Pelosi's from. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, uh, so th- California is crazy. This this one is from Sacramento CBS, and uh, you're not going to believe this. This is no joke. There's a bill that already passed the state assembly mm. with unanimous bipartisan support. 
That means Republicans and Dems and Dema asses approved it. Both ass clowns approved this. It Ooh. encourages California schools to teach students about the racial significance of Barack Obama's presidency. Are you serious? I know it. Come on! I know. I know. Uh, the bill by Assemblyman Chris Holden, who's a Democrat in, Pens- in Pasadena, asked state education officials to include Obama's election in history and social study- studies standards, laying out what students are expected to learn. High school history students already um, learn about recent presidents, but Holden says lessons about Obama also should focus on his election meant for racial equality and civil rights. What has, what has this clown done? for racial equality and civil rights. Name me one thing he has done. Nothing. Well, I mean, I, I think you can even ask the Black Caucus. Mm-hmm. What, what is it? They're always mad at him because he, he didn't... What has he done? Nothing. He's not even African-American. He's nope. Arab. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is, this he, is, he's this not is, even uh, African-American. His father's from Kenya. I think he's a black Arab. Mm-hmm. And his mama was white. I wrote a song about it, but I'm not going to sing it. Oh, don't please. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. Um, only Miss Capow has ever heard that song. Because if I were to sing the song... I, it's a good song. It is a great song. Great lyrics, but... Uh, yeah. It's probably not discerning to sing it. <laughs> uh, this is what this idiot said, Pat, you know, that wrote the bill. He said on the assembly floor that the 2008 election, quote, should not be just a mere footnote within textbooks, but rather focus on the significance of Americans overcome our nation's past and acknowledging that Americans are moving in the right direction. Really? You think so? Did you listen to Patrick Meekin's program Wednesday? Obviously not. Did you listen to it? No, you didn't. Because you're a clown. You are an ass clown. Yep. There I said it. The bill says the election was a historic step in the effort towards the equality in the United States and that previous elections in the, in the nation evolved intimidation and physical violence that prevented millions of African Americans from voting. Mm-hmm. What century was this? I mean, the, I mean, after the 60s, really? Yeah. It, it, this, it, this is ridiculous. <laughs> so anyway, the state of California Board of Education is expected to update academic standards during the 2015-16 school year and does not have to follow lawmakers' recommendations. However, textbooks could be updated within five years, likely after Obozo leaves office. See, it goes back to that scripture. The Lord is known by their judgment, which he executes. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Oh, wow. And, And just think about it. California is one of the states that are implementing this this ridiculous common core state standards I know. BS to these kids, just making them more stupid than they already are. Mm-hmm. And now they gotta they gotta learn about Obozo. Well, that they got he's this significant. Yes, they got this in the common core math. Yeah, so they can go. Uh, they can do this. Let's see here. Obozo plus Obozo equals four ass clowns. <laughs> How's that math? <laughs> L.A. Now says a teen is accused of trying to beat elderly woman to death. Thank God he's arrested. Well, guess what? This is in our own backyard. Yes, this is this where we live, people. happened in Hemet, where we live. We live in the beautiful garden city of Hemet, and this clown is here. You know why? Because the state of California is releasing all these prisoners. They're releasing mm-hmm. juvenile delinquents. They're, they're sex offenders. Yep. I get notified about once a month. What's my last notification was last week yes. of oh, 42 yes. sex offenders in my zip code. 42. 42. That's crazy. In my zip code alone. Mm-hmm. And there's what, two or three zip codes in Hemet? Yep. My zip code alone, 42. I just got notified as of last month that moved here. When I looked at them, the majority of them are sexual assaults on children. Yep. Nice. State of California is releasing all these people because of the three strikes law. It was overruled. And so, mm-hmm. and the California prisons are uh, saturated and county jails are saturated. So just releasing all these, these criminals on the street. So this punk 
is 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And here's what he did. A 14-year-old boy, uh, he was wanted on suspicion of torturing and attempted to kill an 87-year-old woman. While she was sleeping. In a retirement home (sighs) here in Hemet. He's been arrested. His name is Raymond Michael Miranda. He was tracked to Temecula, which is about 20 minutes away. He was brought back, booked in uh, City Hall. Mm-hmm. Uh, they uh, they released his identity and stuff because of the the nature of it. He almost killed. He poured well. He poured bleach on this gal. Yes, they beat her Poor half baby. to death. Police said they believed that Raymond had a 15 year old and a 15 year old teen broke into a gated retirement home. Yep. It's called the Camelot here in Hemet. It uh, looks like a big castle. Yeah. And all these mm-hmm. all these old people retired there in security and they think they're safe. Yeah. But not in Ass Clownville. No. Uh-uh. Not, not in California when kids are going to learn about the significance of Ass Clowns. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this poor woman is sleeping in her bed and these two teens uh, get, um, break in and they br- um, brutally beat her and then they pour bleach on her body before fleeing the scene. They pour bleach on her. She's in critical condition. She's Bless in intensive care. She can't even talk, and this is like a week afterwards. She's probably going to die. Dear Lord Jesus. The cops say she was severely beaten. Hemet police say that. I think there's, what, two cops here in the whole yeah. town? Because they've decimated the police force. Yep. There's no money to pay cops, and all the cops have left, and it, they're just there's no one here anymore. Mm-mm. You're on your own. This is really terrible. Yeah, that was right here. I have a little clip. I'm going to play a little short clip of uh, the story. All right. All right. A brutal crime in the Inland Empire, and tonight a teenager has been arrested. Police have just caught a 14-year-old accused of torturing a woman in a senior citizen's home. Tonight, KCAL 9 Inland Empire reporter Crystal Cruz is live in Hemet. Crystal, with brand new details. What do you have? And detectives working on a tip drove all the way down to Temecula, and that's where they found this 14-year-old boy inside a hotel in the Pachanga Casino. Apparently, this room rented by an unnamed adult. Meanwhile, the victim, she is still in ICU. One week ago, this happened to her, and we are told her injuries are so severe that she cannot even speak. 14 years old and wanted for attempted murder and torture of an 87-year-old woman inside her first floor apartment in Hemet. The attack happened a week ago while the woman was sleeping inside her home at the Camelot Senior Living Community. That's amazing. There's there's nothing worse than to hear about our, you know, the elderly being abused that way. That and children. You it know just why? infuriates me. Because they're actually real victims. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not people who are out there, you know, partying, oh, acting stupid, Lord. driving drunk, or getting in fights. They're, they're really victims. Mm-hmm. And that's what's so ugh, disheartening. I hate to keep talking about Obozo here, but he's... He came, he's in the news. He was well, in the news this week. <laughs> yeah. They, and, he, this, and the stories about him are just so ugh, frustrating. Well, yeah, because it just shows the, 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 the total depravity and wickedness of... Of our nation, the whole the globe, whole world, yes, the whole planet, mm-hmm. just spinning in a spiral direction down in the, the toilet bowl. Yeah, this is from cnsnews.com. Oh. I'm him to Obama and end oppression of Muslims, and Obama to Iman says, "Pray for me." This is amazing because. Um, a lot of people still don't believe that uh, Hussein, Barack Hussein Obozo, is a Muslim. Mm-hmm. They still think they, some. I think there's some idiots that still think he might have Christian values or something. Now you yeah, gotta you gotta be they do. Dead. You yeah, gotta be for a sure total snail. for sure. Yeah, it says uh, visiting a Malaysia's national mosque on Sunday. President O was asked by the institutions Ayman to end oppression against Muslims worldwide. Oh yeah, because they're not they're not oppressing Christians or exactly. anybody else. No, no, poor poor Muslims. Mm-hmm. So Obama replied, "Pray for me." According to Grant Ammon Ismaili or Ismail Muhammad, who took him on a 25 minute tour of the mosque, Obama also said, "This is um, Bernama." 
quoted ah. Ismail or whatever. Yeah. He says, Obama also said that every day when he wakes up, he always does his best to put an end to oppression and conflicts affecting communities. That is such a lie. He's an idiot. That's such a lie. The 70 year old cleric at Obama had frequently replied with, Insa Allah. That's a Malaise or Malay for Allah willing. And Terama Kaish. That means thank you during the tour. He says, it was nice of him, although he could not speak much of the Malay language, but understood what I said to him. Uh, Oblama, who wore a dark suit and removed his shoes, also visited and paid his respects to the National Mausoleum at the Moss Complex, where former prime ministers, blah, 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 are, are buried, right? So he's praying to the dead and sucking their toes. <laughs> <laughs> A cheese wrap. He has a cheese wrap. Going, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good Muslim taco. <laughs> the Prime Minister Najib Razak said, it was not common for the leader of a superpower to include a visit to a mosque in his itinerary. Well, he it said is it was, his religion. Well, yeah, of course it's not common because most leaders would say, if I do this, it looks like I side mm-hmm. with this particular religion. Or, you know what I mean? There's yeah. Of, but if you're Muslim, of course you're going to take off your shoe and, 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 and suck the toe of, of a dead camel. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, uh, where was I? <laughs> oh, let's see. It goes on and on. Invited to comment on Obama's decision to visit a mosque, but not a church while in the country. Huh. Council of Churches of Malaysia General Secretary Herman Satre demurred but said that those responsible for arranging the visit had ensured that he is made aware of the religious freedom issues in the country. Well, apparently the Muslims, um, they say they're around 61%, and the minorities are Buddhists, about 20%. Mm-hmm. Christians are only 9%, and Hindu 6%. Um, huh, I wonder, I wonder why, the, why, why the, the Muslims, if they're 61%, are feeling oppressed. Yeah. That's interesting. Um. A spokeshole for the National Evangelical Christian Fellowship uh, said uh, that he welcomed the fact that Obama chose to tour the National Mosque. Really? He's, he's, this guy is from the National Evangelical Christian Fellowship. Mm-hmm. His name is Reverend Dr. Ohong Singh. And he welcomed that fact. You see what you see? Yeah. You see why cultural Christianity is just such a toilet bowl? You see why I just can't stand it? Mm-mm. It has nothing to do with Jesus Christ, the Son of God, biblical, scripture, doctrine, anything. It's nothing but a stupid, empty religion. Yep. And so many people are falling for it. Yep. Oh, man. Given the challenges and concerns for non-Muslim religions in Malaysia especially Christianity, it would have been good for President Obama to visit the places of religious worship of other religions. Huh? That's what If you do for Singh one, said. you have to do it for the other. This would help him better understand the issues facing non-Muslim religions in Malaysia. That doesn't even make sense. No. It doesn't even make sense. Um, anyway, it goes on and on and on. But it, the point is, it's very unusual for a world leader to go do that yeah, because he's Muslim yeah and we've been saying that we said that from day one even before he was elected yes we say you cannot vote for this man he is Muslim and you know what I would respect him more if he just come out and said I'm Muslim I'm Muslim <laughs> and I'm the first one okay you know we had we had all kinds of bozos in there it don't matter mm-hmm. none of them are but it's just that he was deceptive he and still, they lied yeah, they and still lie you know I hate that yeah, now, um, and this all has to do with, you know, Common Core, why the kids are all messed up, why you got a 14-year-old, you know, brutally beating an 87-year-old woman. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, it's top down. Yes. There's no leadership. There's no morals. It's total depravity. Mm-hmm. How about this one? Uh, big chill. Feds want to scour net media for hate speech. This one's a good one. Well, what's important this, about this is that it's the internet radio broadcast, like the one you're listening to right now, mm-hmm. the Kapow Radio Show Network, 
and everybody on it. That Gore founded. <laughs> <laughs> Gore invented the internet. Why doesn't no one but believe? Why does no one believe? No one him? listens to him. <laughs> no, I, I can't believe it. Okay, okay. So he was wrong on the whole global <laughs> climate thing, but it doesn't mean he didn't invent the internet. <laughs> oh my goodness. He. Um, what's bad about this is because it affects shows like this one. Yes, shows you're listening to on Blog Talk, Spreaker, all over the internet. Uh, they want to scour those. Mm-hmm. It's two Democratic lawmakers. Oh, go figure, Dems. Who could these be? If they have their way, Barack Hussein's Justice Department. Now that's head by that. That's headed by that idiot Eric Holder. Holden. Mm, Holder. Holden. Uh, Holder. 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 Will submit a report for action against any any internet sites, broadcast, cable television or radio shows determined to be advocating or encouraging violent acts. Now, you might say, what does that have to do with you, Brother Kapow? Or anybody? Because if Sister, if Miss Kapow reads a scripture mm-hmm. like she did today yeah. from Psalms, and it says, God's going to come and destroy the wicked. He's going to kick their booties. He's going to smash in their teeth. He's mm-hmm. going to give them a, a hemorrhoids. He's against homosexuals. Exactly. And you're talking about... Um, Sodom and Gomorrah and it rained down fire and brimstone and it destroyed the evil there, the wickedness. And you talk about that, then anybody can rise up and say their speech is hateful and it's calling for violence, even if it's from God, Mm -hmm. it's calling for violence or or from their listeners to um, be mean Mm -hmm. to certain groups, Mm -hmm. Muslims, gays, fagalots, whatever you want to call them. It's, it's, because it's hate speech. What's bad about this bill is that how they determine what is hate speech is open to their interpretation. interpretation. Mm-hmm. Of course. These two uh, these two idiots should read their names. Senator Ed Markey from uh, Massachusetts and Representative Hakeem Jeffries from New York. Who's named Hakeem? Who names your kid Hakeem unless you're a, ba- a basketball player? <laughs> Hakeem Jabbar. <laughs> <laughs> the hate crime reporting. See, I just now. Okay. I know. I so just violated. Just I just violated the hate crime reporting act of 2014. It would create an updated comprehensive report examining the role of the intranet, not the intranet, the internet. <laughs> I think I'm still at work talking internet stuff. Uh, internet and other telecommunications and encouraging hate crimes based on gender, race, religion, ethnicity, or sexual orientation Mm. and create recommendations to address such crimes. I wonder what those recommendations would be. Off with their heads. Exactly. Guillotine (laughs) like... uh, Patrick's dream. Yes, exactly. Not only the guillotine, but um, the IRS will come and get you in. Oh, yeah. They'll send some devil winds to destroy your property. I know it was harp. I know it was harp that destroyed my steel <laughs> building. And it was the Illuminati who turned on the harp machine. Yep. Yep. The one page. Because they're hateful. <laughs> Check it out. It's a one page bill. It's not even like. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even like. The, <laughs> they took I think this time. article is probably longer than the bill. It is. It's not like they took the time. Like, at least give it some thought and put like 25 <laughs> pages together. Put some pork in there. It's a one-page bill. Probably says, you speak bad, you die. It's a comic strip. Head. It's a comic strip. It is. Because that's the only thing these idiots can uh, relate to. Yeah, is, with is their crayons. Drawings. It's crayons. Mm-hmm. You know what the problem is with the crayons, though? They keep sticking them up their noses. <laughs> that is their noses this, this, uh, their Democrat, poop, poop. this Marky guy has two crowns in his ears and two in his <laughs> nose. And he's going, Barack Hussein Obama, Barack Hussein Obama. I just violated it again. Wasn't hateful. It's, it's, not, it's funny. Not a, it's not encouraging violence. If you're just saying stick a crown up your nose, <laughs> how violent can that be? It's a one-page re- bill is reviewed uh, by uh, W and D. It calls for the Justice Department. That's at Eric uh, Holder. Yeah, and the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights to analyze information oh, on yes. the use of tele- telecommunications, including the internet. Broadcast television and radio, tele- cable television, public access television, commercial mobile services. You see how they want to control everything, though? 
to advocate and encourage violent acts and the commission of crimes of hate. Yes. Now, this is what's scary. The bill does not define which actions by broadcasters would be considered to have encouraged violence. Simply leaving that open to interpretation. That can't be. Mm-mm, mm-mm. That can't be. Nope. Oh, you know what? I We often talk about the future. And, you know, I will, I will tell Ms. Kapow this because we've been around long enough to, to know that things do change. They can and they will and they do change. And you might be at a place right now where you're like, oh, this is great. I'm, you're all settled and. You know, you're listening to internet radio or you're getting fed on this ministry or this ministry. And that can all change in like a heartbeat. Like that, yep. It can all go away in a heartbeat. Yep. This could be our last show. Yeah. And you just for all ne- we know. You never know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you never know. I can get a letter from the IRS saying knock it off or blah, 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 blah. Well, you just shut just you down. Shut, yeah, shut it down because it's hateful and, mm-hmm. you know, who are you? I mean, all I could just be targeted. And, yeah, and, and the compelled listeners are... You know, Googling or, you know, trying to call us up and stuff and you're gone. we're gone. Yeah. They can't find us. And I'm sure there's bigger fish to fry. But, you know, if, if you look at, uh, you know, guys like Alex Jones and things like that, you know, bigger fish to fry. But they probably got attorneys and, you know, they're mm-hmm. probably squared away. They'll they'll start you know, with the smaller ones first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot easier. So, you know, I mean, it, it just what we're saying is that things can change. Enjoy it while you can. Mm-hmm. Get it while you can. Do not take anything for granted. Nope. Years ago, we used to take going to church for granted, and yeah. you would go to church, and you would you would be with other Christians, and you would have good worship, and you'd have good word, you had a good pastor, you had good fellowship. It's not without problems, but you had church. Mm-hmm. I look back and go, oh gosh, I miss those days. Those mm-hmm. days, for us at least, are gone yep. because church has changed. At yeah. least where we're at in the Southern California area, we're at. There are no good churches out here, Mm-mm. and we have thousands of them around us. In fact, we're in Calvary Chapel Heartland mm-hmm. with Marietta, California, twenty minutes away. Yep, that's the Calvary Chapel Heartland. So a lot of these churches come out of Calvary, and so they all have that milky, milk toast, yeah, bleh, 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 you know, with no power behind yeah. it, and they're mm-hmm. just and they're all raping each other and having sex with everybody that moves. Mm-hmm. Bunch of fools. Oh, was that violent speech or what? I didn't see any violence. In okay. It. <laughs> uh, this is from yeah. the Daily Sheeple. I really like this. Uh, I really like this website. I'm going to quote what they say. It's not me saying it. They said it. The Daily Sheeple wake the flock up. <laughs> That's very clever. That's their line. <clears throat> I didn't say it. I mean, I said it, but I didn't make it up. I didn't. Mm-mm. It didn't they, come from your. It wasn't birthed from your mind. Not like El Gore, who, <laughs> who invented the internet. <laughs> Psychiatrists now say that nonconformity is a mental illness. Oh, you are you are something. Only the sheeple are sane. Now I've heard everything. Well, that you know it was funny because uh, uh, um, Heather commented. She goes, "Well, that must make me you know uh, insane." Oh, yeah. You know, Jesus. Crazy freak. Jesus freak. Like I said, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Modern psychiatry has become a hotbed of corruption, particularly the kind that seeks to demonize and declare mentally ill anyone who deviates from what is regarded as the norm. This is abundantly evident in the latest installment of the industry's Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, or the DSM. Mm. which dubs people who do not conform to what those in charge declare to be normal as mentally insane. The so-called condition for why a person might choose to resist conformity has been labeled by the psychiatric profession as oppositional defiant disorder or (laughs) ODD. I have oppositional defiant disorder. Jeez, many crickets. The new DSM defines this made-up disease as an ongoing pattern of disobedient, hostile, and deviant behavior, and also lumps it alongside attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD, Wow! another made-up condition whose creator, Dr. Leon Eisenberg, admitted to be phony on his deathbed, and I do remember reading that. Oh, yeah. Wow. As you might expect from this type of open-ended description, almost any 
personal behavior perceived by someone else to be undesirable or strange might be cat- categorized as symptomatic of ODD. Oppositional. Defiant disorder. <laughs> Children who wow. throw temper tantrums or fight with their siblings, for instance, might be declared to have it and be mentally ill. Also, children who might express disagreement with their parents or teachers. Or Christians, a, a show like this. Marcos, Justin, Patrick, you and I. You and know what I just got of that, though? The, the, the optional deviant disorder? Uh-huh. It, stands, it says odd. O-D-D. Oh, odd. They did You're that an on oddball. purpose. They did that on purpose. <laughs> That's good. I just caught that. That's not by mistake. No. So you, you're odd because mm-hmm. now you can now you can just kind of play on words and instead of going he's got ODD you go he's odd. Mm-hmm. What's wrong with that person? He's odd. He's an odd Th- fella. Throw him in a FEMA camp and give him pills. Mm-hmm. You know. Wow. What I'm saying? Isn't that something? Anyway. Crazy. Um. Yeah. Psychiatrist. How about this uh, Mark of the Beast um, craziness here? This is from, oh, <laughs> we don't even say where it's from. It's called The Mark. Scientists claim human microchip implants will become not optional. Not optional? Uh... Technologies designed specifically to track and monitor human beings have been in development for at least two decades. I say more. Yeah. In the virtual realm, software programs are now capable of watching us in real time, going so far as to make predictions about our future behaviors and sending alerts to the appropriate monitoring station depending on how a computer algorithm flags your activities. That is in and of itself a scary proposition. It is. What may be even scarier, however, is what's happening to the physical realm. According to researchers on the human embedded microchips, it's only a matter of time before these systems achieve widespread acceptance. Mm. Which is true, because they just do little by little by little. And you, and, you know, every time you take something else, they give you a little bit more. And well, what they say, they say, chances are you're carrying a couple of RFID microchips anyway right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you are, they're sending out a 15-digit number that identifies you. That number can be picked up by what's called an ISO-compliant scanner, mm-hmm. and they're everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a quote from the article. It says, it is, it's not possible. It's not possible to interact with society in a meaningful way by not having a mobile phone. Isn't that true? And you know what? Just a few short years ago, that wasn't true. Mm-mm. I remember when the the iPhones first came out and everybody wanted a smartphone and they're going, oh, you got one of those? And, you know, everybody's looking at it. And now, mm-hmm. you, nine, you know, nine-year-old kids have yeah. tablets in their back pocket. And so it says it's not possible to interact with society in a meaningful way by by not having a mobile phone. I think human implants are likely to go along a very similar route. It would be such a disadvantage to not have the implant that it essentially becomes not optional. Yep. I mean, because really, right now you can go, you know what? I'm off the grid. I'm throwing away my uh, smartphone and I'm throwing away my uh, laptops. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be on the internet, the interweb. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I'm done. But go ahead and try to function. Yeah. Go ahead and try to now file a claim when the wind blows the heck out of your property and you got to call uh, the insurance company. Yep. What are you going to do? Oh, I don't have a phone. I'm off the grid. Yep. And there's not like there's pay phones anymore. No. What are you going to do? Uh, it says, your initial reaction to this idea may be one of disbelief, but there's no way society would accept such a device. Why would anyone want to implant this in their body? Consider for a moment where we are right now. For decades, Americans rejected the notion that they would submit to being tracked or recorded. Yet just about every American now carries a mobile phone. In fact, that many consider it's a right prompting the government to actually provide subsidies to those who can't afford one on their own. You know, I remember when I bought one of my new cars and they were talking about those stupid GPS things in the car. And I remember I didn't want one, but it wasn't like I had any option to it because all the cars had GPS in it. And I didn't like that idea. But if you're going to have a car, you're going to have that stupid thing in there. It's going to come with it. And it's going to, you know, probably here in California, you got to have a smart car that, you know, it measures your smog and how much you're driving. And 
blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you're not going to get away from that, you know? Um, so they're so widespread that, I mean, that's that's the way you do it. You, you get people hooked on the technology. They get dependent on it. You can't live without it. So then w- that chip becomes the same way. It's monitoring everything. You can't open your front door without it. You can't, mm-hmm. you can't bank without it. You can't buy or sell. So um, yeah, you can just you can see this you can see it coming. Yeah, you know you can see it you can see it coming. Not unless Obama puts a stop to it first. And I think he's really working hard uh, for the American people to get it. What? Huh? I'm looking at you like I had a spirit of lie. Come on, me <laughs> cast it out, Miss Perry. Cast it out in the name of Jesus. Cast the spirit of lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Telegraph says. China accused of anti-Christian campaign as church demolition begins. Do you remember last week we yes. talked about this? And uh, I think it was last week or the week before. And these poor Chinese uh, people, we talked uh, how they have a state-run you know, religion. You can do the state Christianity yep. or you can do the underground illegal stuff. And get your head cut off. Yep. And uh, this is the state-run Christianity. You should see this church. It's not like a little church. This thing is like a Huge. beautiful, beautiful temple edifice. And now the government's saying they didn't have the proper coats. Mm. <laughs> so they're tearing it apart. And the activists had surrounded the church for a long time and stayed in there. Well, you know, you can't fight City Hall. Mm-hmm. They got their ass beat. And uh, now they're tearing apart uh the church. It said activists accuse Communist Party of barbaric campaign against Christianity. You know what? I think our Democrats should write a bill against the violence on that because that's pretty violent. Yeah. You're in big trouble, mister. You're in big trouble. Demolition teams and police descend on a church that became a symbol of resistance. Resistance. They must be so proud to go home at night and look at their stupid red faces. Demolition teams begin destroying parts of a Chinese church that has become a symbol of resistance to the Communist Party's draconian clutch on religion. Sanjiang Church and Wanzhou, a wealthy coastal city known as the Jerusalem of the East, made headlines earlier this month when thousands, Ms. Kapow, of Christians formed a human shield around mm. the entrance wow. after plans for its demolition were announced. You know what they said? Don't tear down the church. <laughs> Seriously. I saw it on YouTube. It has to be true. I did. I saw it. it was on YouTube. It's fact. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Church members accused communist leaders in Zhejiang province of ordering an anti-church crackdown and claimed that they were plans to completely or partially demolish at least 10 places of worship. Wow. But you know what? Officials rejected those accusations, alleging the church had violated building codes. Mm. Hey, we're only tearing it down because uh, they violated building codes. You should look at the pictures of this beautiful edifice. I know. You, seriously, that you allowed them to build this thing and have it up for years, and you just now said uh, uh, they need two bathrooms instead of one? Yeah. Come on. It's not ADA compliant. Yeah, I think they got odd syndrome. <laughs> they very are odd. Yep. So the uh, government in China, what's, what's sad about this story, there's a lot of things sad about this story, is that you do have places on the planet, on the globe, where Christians, even though they're, they're complying under the state regulation mm-hmm. of having church, church, where Christians are in fact being targeted for that belief. Yes. And there's no doubt about it. You can't get around it. But here... In America, we just got the lazy ass church, mm-hmm. just asleep, just just asleep, just, just asleep. a slumbering. Uh huh. Just a <laughs> look at all the tide money coming in. Sleepy cheese in their eyes. Uh huh. <laughs> sad stuff. Sad stuff, Miss Capel. Very sad. Um, I got a. This is another crazy clip uh, that I that I want to play here in a bit. All right. Um, I'll let you do it. <laughs> this is uh, this is from the Daily Sheeple also, which says, wake the flock up. Mm-hmm. I did not say it. I didn't make it up. The Daily dot com did. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This article is about the uh, living world or living in a world where your appliances spy on you. Wouldn't that be cool? No, I don't like that idea. My microphone is talking back to me right now. Of course it is. 
It's putting things in my head. Of course it is. Because you don't have your foil around your head. Oh, I don't today because the wind blew it off. See? The Illuminati wind. The Illuminati. Just the electricity. The, yep. They turned on the heart machine to get rid of my uh, my hat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Imagine this happened to you, Ms. Kapow. You are fast asleep in the middle of the night. When suddenly you hear the voice of a strange man talking to your baby daughter from inside her room. We read an article like that. Yes, we did. And that's what this one's about. You jump up and rush in there to find that other than your infant sleeping in her crib, but no one was there. But in fact, what this doesn't mention is that that voice, that male voice that was mm-hmm. talking to the baby was cussing at it. Yes. Cursing it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Then you hear him again screaming, wake up, baby, wake up. You focus on the source of the sound, your Wi-Fi baby monitor camera, which suddenly turns its lens on you without your prompt. So whoever has hacked it can scream obscenities at you in your own home in the middle of the night. Freaky. That is what happened to one Cincinnati, Ohio couple just last week. WBTV Fox 19. Wow. What they say is someone had hacked in from outside. So how many other times had someone hacked into their camera and watched their baby through their IP camera made by Foscam? You do kind of feel violated in a way, you think? Yeah, hello. According to tech experts, wireless IP cameras like the one the Sheiks have are an easy way for hackers to open a cyber door directly into your home. Any kind of internet connected device essentially could be subjected to this. Mm. And experts say they uh, can get inside the camera in your home. Hackers may also be able to get inside your lives. Uh, this article goes on about different... Um, Different electronics, you know, last fall, LG Electronics, the TV maker, was was uh, they got in trouble because they they have a smart TV, right? Mm-hmm. And it, even if you change the privacy settings to off, it kept sending the information to Korea about the stuff you were watching. Yep. So yep, they yep, can yep. they can market you and stuff. ABC News also released a list of the nine household appliances that might be spying on you, on your habits, on your usage. And it's uh, your TV, your cable box, dishwasher, clothes dryer, toaster, clock radio and remote control, your lights, your heat and air conditioning, security alarms, insulin pumps and pacemakers, smartphones and your tablet and computer. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Christina on Facebook. (laughs) Did you read that? I did. She said that every (laughs) before she turns off her computer or puts a faces at it. (laughs) That's something I would do. She makes faces at the camera just in case everybody's looking. So now she says she's going to start having to make faces at her toaster. <laughs> and, uh, and her family's going to think she's crazy when she's making these uh, these faces. She's uh, odd. She's, she's got op- odd. Oppositional deviant disorder. Oh, it's deviant, not defiant? Defiant. Deviant, oh, I defiant. I don't remember. I, I know Same I thing. I know I'm sick. I just know I have it. I don't know what this, I don't know what, what it's called. Probably defiant. I would imagine. Being all defiant. I know is all I know is that I have it, and I need a government subsidy to help me. <laughs> if I just had government money to help me get through my odd, <laughs> I know. So anyway, it goes on and on and on, and it's a very very good article. It's kind of scary. It is. It is creepy. But uh, this gal, uh, I like this this gal. Her name is Melissa Melton. M-E-L-T-O-N. She's of the Daily Sheeple. She's a writer, a researcher, an analyst. And she's the co-creator of True Stream Media. And this is a clip from her talking about these smart cities. All right? All right. Everybody talks about Agenda 21 in terms of the future and in abstract terms. We're doing this report today to show you what it's actually looking like because it's here and it's now. All right, so this was in the BBC. This is... The city of 2050, and it's talking about how everything is going to be on a smart network. They're going to have fiber optics, but it won't just be fiber to the home. It's going to be a case of fiber to everything. It says all services, education, and government, utilities, etc., connected to this network, which will become, quote, the nerve center of the city. And everything is going to be on a sensor network. It says experts predict everything from street furniture to roads to homes we live in will be connected to this network. 
And it even says that some cities may build NASA-style control centers to make predictions about city life, including where crimes may be committed. So now we're talking about pre-crime. It talks about the human network, how rather than mobile phones, we're all going to have... Here's what it actually is. This is Mazdar City. This is called the World of Tomorrow or the New Future City. A lot of people are saying this is what future cities will look like. This is being built currently right now at a price tag of $22 billion in Abu Dhabi. And it's a completely walled smart city. And there's two squares here. They're completely walled. Well, and that's what it's going to be like because everything is going to be on the grid and all of that data will become one big mass. So this is Mazdar City. It's a walled city and it's supposed to be a completely sustainable, zero carbon, zero waste, car free city. They even have these little personal rapid transit cars. This is being backed by World Wildlife Fund, Greenpeace, and even the US government. This is from 2010. And if you think Mazdar looks creepy, Sondo International Business District creeps me out even more. This is another smart city or ubiquitous city. This one's coming in at a price tag of $40 billion. And this one is talking about how everything is going to be on the grid and people will even be chipped. And even mentions here that the schools in this city will be funded by the Ministry of Knowledge Economy, which, if that doesn't sound like it's straight out of George Orwell's 1984 dystopic future nightmare, I'm not sure what does. The world's first city in a box that's going to be ready by 2015, and it's... A consortium of partners including Cisco, 3M, United Technology. Cisco's actually behind uh, the other one, Mazdar, as well. And it says that it will be a completely connected city where any device, building, or road will be equipped with wireless sensors or microchips. And it says it's smart innovations such as streetlights that automatically adjust the number of people on the street. It doesn't mention Intelli streets, but surely that's what it will be, which are the streetlights that have cameras and recording equipment inside of them. It says all houses in Songdo will be equipped with sensors known as Demotica, which will be managed via a large TV in your living room. Uh, next to the homes, there will be telepresence screens at all offices, hospitals, schools, and shopping cen centers. It's going to be tracked, traced, and chipped. Everything. It says traffic will be measured via RFID tags on cars. They will send geolocation data to central monitoring units. Uh, it also says that public transportation will be completely wired. All locations will always be known. It says even, even when citizens throw away their garbage in the disposal, a chip card will be used, so even garbage will collect data. Then it goes on to say everything, the climate, the energy consumption, leisure activities, water consumption, all monitored by data. Special cameras will keep Songdo secured, while children will wear bracelets with sensors so that kids can be found if they're lost while they're playing. Every single thing within this city is going to be tracked, traced, chipped, monitored, and recorded. Well, that's it, Miss Capel. That's it. Yes. Say good night. No more. Nada. Nada. Say All good night. Right. Good night. We'll talk to you guys Monday. Yeah. Good night.
surrounding me.